Today in Knife Banner, we're talking about Italian-made knives, and Kurt, you're sitting at my desk. <laughs> Let's talk knives. When we talk about Italian knives, like what's the first style of knife that comes to mind? A stiletto. I think that's probably... Switchblade, stiletto, maybe a little bit of sharks and jets. The jets are in here. Tony Soprano. Go tell them no speeding in the neighborhood. Yeah, you know? and just got a little snap action going right. in there. Yeah. yeah. So I think when most people think Italian knives, then yeah, I think the first thing that comes to mind is that traditional stiletto switchblade style. And there's definitely a lot of that uh, when it comes to Italian manufacturers, but we're gonna get to some other stuff here in a second. But just to get the Italian style out of the way, uh, we're gonna start off with the AGA Camplin Zero. This is an interesting knife. I think uh, AGA Camplin makes some of the better uh, stiletto switch blades out there. So this specific model comes uh, with an 8.6 overall length, uh, blade length of 3.75 inches. It's got a Bowler N690 blade. This is the bayonet style. I th this is the only one that we currently had in stock. I think most of them, kind of the more traditional style is that, that dagger style, right? Right. Uh, this particular one is the bayonet style. It's got aluminum handles and it comes in at 5.75 ounces. I really like this particular stiletto and a lot of the Italian stilettos in general because they have this interesting lever locking mechanism. So what you do is you kind of pull up on this tab and this is what locks and unlocks the automatic. One thing also to note on these more traditional style uh, switch blades coming out of Italy is that the spring in these, it's not a traditional coil spring like you would find in, you know, like your traditional button lock automatic, right? Right. So your Protex and your launches and all that type of thing. Uh, there's actually a little spring-loaded bar in the bottom of there and the blade compresses it and that's what gives you tension to flip the blade up. Hmm. So that's kind of how these traditional lever lock stilettos work. They're a little bit different than kind of your traditional automatic. I really think they're cool. Um, so that's your, that's your traditional Italian. Let's right. get into some actual like good EDC, high quality manufacturing, the meat and bones of what's coming out of Italy. Now when we, when we say Italian manufactured. So this is basically meaning all the knives, all the manufacturers coming out of Maniago, Italy. So Maniago is a town about 45 minutes, 45 minute drive north of Venice. It's right kind of at the foothills of the mountain there. And there's like 40 plus cutlery manufacturers that are all based in Maniago. And there's some really good manufacturers there that are making some high quality stuff. Kurt, you have the first one on the table. I do. And this is a great one. This is the Fox Baby Core. Now, this knife is really cool. It's a Jesper Voxnez design. It's got an FRN handle with some cool designs here. It's got the wire pocket clip. It is a liner lock and it is a clip point blade. It's kind of an interesting blade profile. I think it is. Burnley has, uh, I know that's not a Burnley design, but Burnley has a similar shaped blade and he calls it a K-tip. Yeah. So I think he's the only one that calls it that, but it's it's kind of a similar type. Yeah, of similar. I, it's like a stubby nosed blade. Mm -hmm. uh, nice thing about the blade though, is it's Bowler M390. This blade length comes in around 2.3 inches. Um, let's see, weight is 2.8 ounces. Now, this knife is a, li it's a little bit small for me, a little too small. Um, I usually go for about a three inch blade, but I can still get three fingers around it. Mm -hmm. Fox has some really cool designs, some great knives. Um, it's always gonna be quality. And for this Buller M390, $69.95. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty good. It's very impressive. So, yeah, so the, good old Jesper, yeah. he's killing it. All right, so the next one I have is the Fox Suru. Um, this has been a pretty popular knife for the past few years. This won the uh, best knife of the year, uh, Blade Show 2018. So it's got a great endorsement coming right out of the box. So yep. this particular knife has an overall length of 5.83 inches, blade length 3.23 inches. It does have a Bowler M390 blade in a drop point carbon fiber handles, which we'll get to in a minute because it's got something interesting going on here. And then comes in at 2.1 ounces, so nice and light as well. I like it for one particular reason, and I haven't seen this on any other knife. I know 
I don't think it's completely novel to this knife, but I haven't seen it on any other knives. And it, that is the fact that it has this carbon fiber lock bar and it's not reinforced with anything. It's all carbon fiber. So yeah. you have the lock bar and then you just have a little, I am gonna imagine it's a steel insert in here. Um, but the carbon fiber is actually what gives the lock bar its tension. And that is super cool because you can have you know, two carbon fiber sides and you can keep the weight down. Um, it also has this interesting pocket clip with the ball so it'll slide in and out of your uh, pants pocket nice and easily. Um, and it's got a nice sweeping blade profile that I really like with a full flat grind. So Blade Show Knife of the Year 2018, definitely a good endorsement for the Fox Suru. This goes for $269.25. Like we talked about earlier, you can get this in a bunch of different configurations. So you can get cheaper models as well. And they come in, I think there's titanium and aluminum versions. So right. that's the Fox Suru. I love the, uh, the milled out holes in the handle. Yeah. Uh, I like that it's all different sizes plus if you think about it, that's taken some weight out. For sure, I mean, 2.1 ounces, like it's pretty darn light knife. Um, and you know, it's got, you know, a substantial size blade for that size. So, right. uh, Fox Zero, that's cool. this one. I like that. I have a lion steel up next. It is a fixed blade and it is called the Bushcraft B41. Comes with a really cool leather sheath. Oh, it smells mm. so good. And handmade in Italy, right there. Boom, says it. That's a nice sheath. I got. I got to be honest. That that's some good leather right there. I feel like Lion Steel does a good job with most of their sheaths. Right. Right. I agree. So this is a four-inch fixed blade. It's the B41. Now this is a model after the B40, and this is more of a refined gentleman's knife has the crown spine. Um, it's got Sleipner steel or Schleip Schleipner, 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 Schleipner. I don't know. <laughs> this is actually listed as a bushcraft knife. Now you were saying something about things that you don't think are bushcrafty on it. Yeah, well you have bushcraft in the, na in the name and I, I don't hate crown spines. I think crown spines are nice but I don't think bushcraft and crown spine definitely go very well together. But, you know, if you have a fire steel with a, its de own dedicated striker, like you can do everything else bushcrafty with it, I guess, too. Right. I really like this knife. I don't know about actual bushcrafting, but this is a nice fixed blade just to have on your side. Um, I, I could definitely see use in hunting with this, processing an animal, um, you got your micarta, so you're not going to lose your grip. Uh, you got that really, really slick, slicey blade and an, a normal belly. And with the Sleipner, it's it's good to hold an edge and it's comfortable. That's one thing Very I noticed. Comfortable. Yeah, one thing I noticed too about that knife is like um, there's not much going on with the handle, which I kind of like when it comes to a bushcraft knife handle because it doesn't force you in any sort of positions. Right. I always have that problem because I have narrow, narrower fingers and like we have the, we have polar opposite fingers essentially. Right. <laughs> so you have larger uh, fingers than I do. And I always find an issue when mm -hmm. knife manufacturers have choils or multiple choils and they're forcing your hand in certain places. So right. that was nice because it's nice and simple. Yeah, super simple but you got this ergonomic shape here on the micarta scales. It is very comfortable on hand. I've I've actually been on the fence of purchasing one of these. I I like the micarta, but the olive wood handles, mm. I'm telling you, they just draw me in. So this B41, it is on the website for $132. It's a pretty good fixed blade. Yeah, not a bad price. Okay, I also have another lion steel on the table. And this one's got a little bit of attention recently. Um, this is the lion steel thrill. It is a slip joint. Um, so it comes in an overall length of seven inches, blade length of three inches. It is an M390 blade with, uh, you know, in a drop point configuration. Aluminum handles, uh, this is one of those, again, models that you can get aluminum, you can get titanium, so pick your poison there. Uh, and then comes in at 2.35 ounces. Your titanium one obviously will be slightly heavier than that. Right. This one is interesting. And the reason this one is interesting is because it's got this hidden clip. It's a pop-out pocket clip. I think this is really cool. 
so the Lion Steel Rock uh, was the first model to come out with this, and we that almost made the table, but not quite. Um, and that knife, when I first saw it, I was like, man, that is a neat idea. I can't believe nobody has thought about that before. But basically the idea is you have a kind of a button on the backside here that you push. And when you push that out pops the pocket clip. And what that allows you to do is it allows the knife not to have any hot spots when you have it in your hand. Yeah. So it just recesses in the knife. And I think that is a fantastic idea. And I'm glad that Lion Steel has, has thought of this. It's a little bit interesting, especially on a thinner knife, um, getting the button actuated into your pocket. But I tried it a few times, and when you actually have it kind of resting in your pocket and on your side, you get a little bit more touch points on it, so it's not right. Know, it's not trying to fall out of your hands. So that's the Lion Steel Thrill. Uh, I really enjoy this knife. I'm not a huge slip joint person. I think if this came in like a backlock configuration or something like that, it'd be really cool, and I would dig it more. To all you slip joint people out there, I think this is a good option to pick up. Do you want to know what would be sweet? An automatic. An automatic thrill. Yep, throw that thing, put an automatic spring on there. Oh. It'd be sweet. It would be, be all sweet. sleek and discreet and gentleman-esque. I like a, that. We'd have to get a Lion Steel America so we can get a, so we can get a thrill auto. That would be cool. That would be way cool. Um, I have the next knife. All right, let's do it. It is a Viper knife. This is the Vox Catla. Um, Jesper, again, killing it, man. Killing it. Uh, this is sweet. It's got your titanium scales. It's like this really cool detailed milling. It has this cool collar design and you get the same champagne-ish color from the backspacer. It's got a recess screws yep. on the pocket clip. This is a 3.125 inch blade right there in my sweet spot. Um, Bowler M390 steel. The name, Catla. Now this is interesting. <laughs> yes, for Voxnez, he's up, he's up in the north of, your, of Europe. Mm. And there's a volcano actually in Iceland called the Catla. And there's stories about the Catla being a fire-breathing dragon. Was he supposed to um, knock me over? Iceland, volcano, fire-breathing dragon, boom, you get this knife. So we just did a weekly pick. So that came out Wednesday. And this was on the weekly pick. And what about this knife caught your eye? Honestly, it was the very intricate milling on the titanium scales with that little pop of color. It's nice. nice. Honestly, it is really nice. Uh, it's very comfortable in my hand. Uh, like you said, it's that Boulder M390. It's kind of this modified Tonto, kind of a rolled over the Tonto um, thing there. It's got some pretty sweet milled thumb studs. I like this it's, knife. Yeah, I think uh, I, I really enjoyed the lino lock that was in there. Uh, it's recessed nicely and it's very satisfying. Yes, it's a good one. This knife is $214 on the website. Dope. Okay, moving on to Viper. No, well, my Viper. Uh, so this is the Viper Berus. This is an interesting little fixed blade. Um, I feel like the small EDC fixed blades are starting to come into come into their own recently. Uh, so I think this one kind of fits a lot of those requirements for a small EDC. So this overall length is 2.6 inches. It does have a Bowler M390 blade in a drop point configuration, carbon fiber handles, and is 3.2 ounces. This is an interesting knife. I saw it for the first time this year at SHOT Show. Um, I think what stands out to me uh, most about this knife is the interesting choil placement. It's got a middle finger choil. <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting. You kind of choke up um, and put your you know index finger here, and then you have this interesting choil for your middle finger, so it kind of locks in that way. Uh, it does have a very large lanyard hole. Um, a couple actually different. Uh, is it comfortable in your hand? You know, for me, like. I think with my narrower fingers, like I have to probably get my finger in there a little bit more than you would. Right. Uh, so I think that'd be more of a personal preference thing. I think for me, it's not quite there. If you have bigger fingers like you, Kurt, I think it would be, I think it would be fine. 
It also comes uh, with this interesting sheath. Uh, this sheath, what do I have to say about this sheath? This sheath is made for both of their blade profiles. So it's made for their huh. sheep's foot version and their uh, regular drop point version. Right. So it has a tendency to be a little bit loose at the tip. The retention here is fine. Uh, okay. You kind of have this little retention hole here that, that keeps it nice and, and retained. Um, but it tends to be a little bit loose at the tip. So depending on if you want to boot carry it, that might click a little bit for you, yeah. Kurt. Uh, one plus though is it does come with an Alta clip, which I think these are really cool. Um, and they tend to, you know, grip really hard on whatever you're mounting I to. I love those clips. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't like them, and I think it's more because they don't understand the function of them. But I can wear like gym shorts and stick a fixed blade with a UD clip. It's amazing. A uh, cool mounting mounting option for the Viper Knives Berus Berus something like that. <laughs> uh, comes in at 154.95 on the website, as Kurt likes to say. So that's right on the website. On the website. All right, I've got one more. This is an MKM Burnley design. It comes with this cool leather slip. Uh, it's pretty thin actually. So to either put it in your pocket or put it on your belt, it's kind of one of those that I think would just disappear. It's just really thin. Does it have a belt loop or is it just a... It has a belt loop. Oh, okay, that's cool. So you could like attach it to your belt, have it in your pocket right. and then you pull it in and out without the whole thing coming out. Right, exactly. So this is a slip joint. It's the Fara. Now, this thing is gorgeous, I think. I, it's hard to explain the texture. It's, it's not unfinished, but it's kind of unfinished. It has some texture to it. It has texture to it. It feels like wood, you know, has some kind of sharp edges a little bit, not, not too bad, but olive wood. And you got that blue titanium pivot collar. Lucas Burnley, if you guys don't know Lucas Burnley, you guys gotta watch some of our older videos with Lucas, the links down in the description. Lucas Burnley is a stud and he makes amazing knives. This thing does not disappoint. You've got your liners that kind of pop out in the back for your lanyard hole. It's got these three little milled out nubbins. I'm just gonna call them nubbins. Perfect. Lucas will probably that, call me and be like, That uh, sounds completely appropriate. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this thing's cool. Bowler M390, you got the blue pivot collar, the leather slip, the olive wood. This is a 2.99. It's a three inch blade, slip joint. It's pretty cozy in my hand. I'm not crazy about slip joints because I've, I've chopped myself. Okay, I was gonna ask in the you. Past. Yeah. But this one is actually a really comfortable one. And I like that the olive wood is a little open because then I can throw on whatever kind of oil finish or, or if I wanna stain it, you know, I can kind of make it my own you know, which is cool. Yeah, I feel like that's a, that could be a knife modification that not a lot of people think about. Like if you have wood scales on your knife, like why not, you know, throw some sanding on there, throw a stain on there, like whatever finish you want, right? Right, no, I, I totally agree. And this Lucas Burnley knife is a great option for that. This one comes in on the website for 119. 119. It's a good one, the Fara from MKM. So MKM, something to note about MKM before I get into my MKM. So MKM is kind of a, a collaboration of a bunch of these Italian manufacturers that are in Maniago. So they'll take- It's like a team effort. Yeah, so all of these manufacturers come together to create MKM knives and it's it's a pretty cool collaborative what is effort. It, what MKM is that? Uh, uh, Maniago knife manufacturing or something? Something to that effect, so. Uh, that's kind of how MKM works. It's, it's a cool, it's a cool project that's based there in Maniago. Uh, so my MKM is an Isanso. This is a Vox design. This particular one is a Blade HQ exclusive. So it's got micarta. So Kurt, it's micarta for you, man. I know. I actually really like that micarta. It's smooth. This, uh, this micarta is, is nice. It's, it, it is smooth. Um, but it has like a nice, like even texture to it, right. which is, which is nice. This uh, particular knife comes in at 5.62 ounces, blade length of 2.25 uh, inches, not ounces, 
Uh, it comes in a Bowler uh, N690 blade. Uh, sheep's foot configuration, micarta, and it's 2.46 ounces. And I imagine that will change slightly depending on what handle materials. This right. does come in, I think we have carbon fiber versions, we have FRN versions, as well as the micarta ones. These are interesting little knives, uh, like even opening them, like there's not a traditional like flipper or thumb right. stutter or anything. It's kind of this interesting grab it with your middle fingers and push open. And once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple uh, and it's very smooth. Uh, and then it's got a liner lock. You have a two-way reversible wire pocket clip. And I then like you got the this huge lanyard carabiner thing on the back. So yeah. I always thought it would be easy to have a carabiner like on your backpack or something and just clip it on. Oh yeah. Uh, I love those wire clips. Yeah. The wire clips are nice. It's nice because they keep the weight down. Um, like it, like I said before many times, some people love them, some people hate them. It's just kind of a personal I think they're harder thing. to bend. I think so? Like, I, I feel like on my knives with the wire clip, I don't catch them as much. That could be. Maybe it's because they're a little more smooth, a little rounded. I'm not sure. It is true. They don't have square edges like a normal pocket clip would right. have. So what do you guys prefer out there? Do you prefer wire clips? Do you prefer kind of your regular old, I don't know, milled out, stamped out clips? Uh, that's, an, that's an interesting topic. So let us know what you think about that in the comments. So the MKMS Sanso, this goes for $109.95. There are a bunch of different configurations you can get on the website. So that is for this one particularly. Uh, check the website. There's uh, the cleaver slash sheep's foot style. There's the regular drop point. There's the hawk bill one. There's serrated. There's non serrated. Like, there's so many different options. Love it. MKM, is that? Are you done with all your knives? I'm man? done. Oh, man. I'm done. You have a couple extra. Yeah, I have a couple extra. These are just going to kind of be fly throughs here. So, one thing interesting to note there's a lot of your favorite brands. Um, that make their knives in Italy or make some of their knives in Italy. So I have a few on the table here that you might not have realized that uh, are manufactured in Italy. So the first one is the Giant Mouse Iona. This is an interesting knife that came out a while back where you have a pretty good price point when it comes to an M390 blade. So it comes in at $100, M390, pretty dope. FRN handle, kind of your wire pocket clip, reversible. Man, there's a lot of Jesper on the table. Yeah, I feel like I Jesper there's likes- like, There's like six. Jesper likes so. his Italian manufacturers for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next one I have on the table is by Spyderco. So everybody knows Spyderco makes amazing USA made knives. They make some great knives in Taiwan and then some of their lower end stuff like the Tenacious is made in China. Uh, this particular Spyderco Urban is a slip joint, wire pocket clip, FRN handles, N690 blade. This is also made in Italy. So Spyderco makes some knives in Italy. Um, the new Spy Opera is manufactured in Italy. So keep an eye out for that. So Spyderco makes some stuff in Italy. And then CRKT, man. This... Huh. <laughs> this That's knife, interesting. This knife makes me chuckle. <laughs> of all of all knives. This is the CRKT Motley. Uh, it is a Canongian design. This is, this is a knife. This is an interesting, interesting knife. You know what? The design on it is actually pretty cool. I like the carbon fiber inlay. But I don't know. I don't know if I could get my hands on that. Well, we were talking about forcing your hand into certain positions, like again yeah, with me with narrow fingers. Like that. this one forces all of your fingers into a position. So if that works for you, that's awesome. If it doesn't, eh, you're kind of stuck with it. Anyway, this is kind of a premium CRKT. This goes for four hundred twenty-five dollars on the website. It has an overall length of nine inches, blade length of three point eight inches. It's Schleppner. Schleppner. Mm. Schleppner. Schleipner. However you say it, I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> how do you say it, guys? I don't I know how to say Schleipner. it. I think it's Schleipner. Schleipner? Yeah. Schleipner sounds cool. Uh, so does a Schleipner uh, blade. You have this interesting carbon fiber inlay in titanium. And then of course you, that, that crazy recurve slash clip point blade, so. Modified. Yeah, there you go. Modified <laughs> blade. So that's the CRKT Kenangin Motley, also made in Italy, so. A lot of your favorite brands that you might not have known makes their knives in Italy. Yeah, so. I think that's cool. That's dope. That's all the knives, man. That's it. We did it. So now it comes to the time of the day where we ask, out of the knives on the table, which one would you take home? Oh, it's real tough, actually. I like this Lion Steel fixed blade, but if that other Lion Steel 
wasn't a slip joint, I would take that home. The throw? Yeah. But I think I'm going to have to stick with the Bushcraft B41. It's nice. I like it. It's it's my jam. You know, I like fixed blades. I like hunting and that kind of stuff. And so this fits yeah. my fancy. It's definitely a well-made knife. Even yes. though it doesn't have a sharp spine, it is a well-made knife. Right. Sure. How about you? What knife? I think I really like the Suru, man. And it's kind of interesting because like this particular uh, design doesn't work with my hands super well. But there's something that intrigues me about this carbon fiber lock bar. It's cool. Yeah, like I haven't, and I'm sure there's knives out there somewhere that have carbon fiber lock bars. I don't know of one. Uh, let me know in the comments if you do know of one. But man, this carbon fiber lock bar is super interesting. Um, I would just, I would take it home just for that fact. So. That's cool. Fox Sewer is my pick. I think that is everything. Any last words, Kurt? No, Italian knives, they're awesome. I'm ready to go get some pizza. Yeah, so if you guys haven't picked up an Italian knife yet, consider picking them up. They have great manufacturing, great materials. There are an umpteen million different varieties of each model for most of these manufacturers. So that is also a plus. You can kind of customize it to however you want. Um, so yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's everything, guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, do all the things. We'll see you on the next one. Hey, welcome to the end screen, guys. Thanks for watching. If you're not already subscribed to Blade HQ, hit that subscribe button right over there. If you want to go check out some more Italian knives, head on over to bladehq.com. And down below there, there's a playlist full of great knife content. We'll see you on the next one. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it.